the 19th Legion, the Raven Guard, the Emo Space Marines. If you need to picture something, picture Spider-Man 3 when Peter Parker became cool for the middle of the movie, and that's pretty much the Raven Guard. Often overlooked by the fandom because they're yet another Black Power armor clad Space Marine chapter, there's actually a lot of really good meat on the bone for the Raven Guard. They're pretty darn cool. One of my favorite things about the Raven Guard is their Primarch, Corvus Corax. That name translates to Raven Raven. Incredible creativity on the part of Games Workshop. Within the Legion, the Raven Guard are known for using guerrilla tactics, hit and run, actual strategy, and having the most number of scouts of any Space Marine Legion. Mostly because their gene seed kinda sucks. It barely works and it's really hard to come by. Hopefully their Primarch comes back soon. But I want to paint up a Raven Guard and see what I can do with them because I have some ideas. When I think of the Raven Guard, I think of lighter armor, more along the lines of Phobos than Tacticus. And I've been wanting to try out carving off their little extra knee armor. I used my Dremel for this because I'm impatient and then cleaned it up with a sanding twig. I glued these back down and they look great. I might start doing this all the time just for variety. I sanded down the cowling around his neck as well, just to slim him up a little bit. For the Imperialis, I clipped off the little skull because I want to add a little bird skull I found in the Citadel Skulls Kit. I kind of wish it was a little... littler? But it gets the point across hanging off the front of his armor. Now to pick the weapons. The Intercessor Kit has this great one-handed arm holding a bolter. I clipped it and drilled the barrel, poking my hobby knife in the center and then spinning it to carve a little hole. Now for the ammo and scope. The normal Intercessor Kit has some good options, but the Infiltrator's Kit has a triple scope variant. This, in my opinion, shows just how devoted my Raven Guard is to good accuracy. And speaking of accuracy, is three scopes really enough to ensure a good shot? I decided to use an Intercessor Scope after all, giving him a fourth option. And the best part is, he's not even using one of them. He's hip-firing his hyper-accurate bolter. For his offhand, I found an arm throwing a grenade out of the Assault Intercessor's kit, and I glued this on. If you're starting a Marine Army, I would suggest buying your different troopers all at once. All these kits are completely interchangeable, and it's really fun building these figs with all of these options at your fingertips. I clipped off a selection of pouches and holsters. The Raven Guard might wait for weeks preparing for the perfect ambush, so they need to bring all their supplies into the field. I glued these onto his belt, and my favorite part is this little pouch with an extra scope. For those keeping count, that is five scopes. I hope I've got enough scopes on there. He's got four scopes on his rifle and one more scope on his hip for all of that sneaky long range shooting. Now it is time for probably the most important part of a Raven Guard, the Mark VI Beaky Helmet. Now the Beaky Helmets are a little bit hard to come by. There's only two Primaris kits that they come in. You can get the, one of them in the Stern Guard Veterans box and you can get two in the Raven Guard upgrade frames, which also comes with decal. Pretty darn pricey at 30 bucks. One of the only ways to get Raven Guard transfers, but if you know anybody who's been collecting Space Marines for a long time or plays 30k, that might be a good resource. Maybe you can beg, borrow, or bribe for some. I would say maybe a nice meal at McDonald's, or if you're from the Midwest like me, a Culver's Double Deluxe with bacon would get me to part with some bits. I've been collecting Space Marines for almost 10 years, so I have amassed a huge collection of parts. I believe this head came from the old Blade Guard Veterans kit. I glued this on, and a note for beaky heads, you should file down the neck, as these helmets can bump into the full cowling and make it look like he can't bend his neck. After that, I glued on his shoulder pads, and this little birdie is almost complete. Now, I'm thinking about ways to Raven Guard up this fella. One of the things the Raven Guard are known for is their ability to Wraith Slip, and it's not nearly as cool as it sounds. Basically, they can move absolutely silently, even in their giant, ungodly, bulky, heavy power armor. And one of their last rituals before they become a full battle brother is they need to wraith slip up to a little raven and then yoink them. And then they take that raven skull and wear it somewhere on their armor to show that they have completed the trials. This guy in particular, he found a really big raven. I think this is probably Imperial propaganda that they can actually move truly silently. I think it's just that they take really good use of like espionage tactics and being sneaky, so I want to find a way to represent that on the model. Previously, I've made camo ponchos for my stormtroopers using green stuff, and this was doable but really tricky, and I don't like waiting for the putty to dry. I have a different idea I want to try to achieve the same result. I took a disposable mask, these are paper, but tougher than paper towel or toilet paper. I cut it up separating the different layers into three. Two layers of thin fabric stuff, and then one layer that's basically toilet paper. I think I'll use the thin parts. I cut out a neck hole and then cut it to be a trapezoid shape. It reminds me a lot of the Lego capes that would always get crushed and ugly when I made Darth Vader actually sit in his TIE Fighter. I checked it on the Mini and it does look about right. 
I took Elmer's glue and saturated the cape in it. This will make it more pliable while I position it and hopefully make it a bit stronger on the finished model. I stuck it through his head and then poked and prodded it into shape. On the long side, I pinched it into a few gathers. I might run this experiment again with tacky glue instead of Elmer's to see if that would help me position these folds a little easier. I found a drop of super glue worked well to stick it into place permanently. A little more poking and prodding and it's pretty good for a shoulder cape made out of garbage. I went back to my Elmer's glue and made stripes of this running across the fabric and then sprinkled on some scale leaves to give it that ghillie suit texture. I am pretty pleased with this. It was definitely easier than the green stuff, but the real test will be to see what it looks like all painted up. And to get this guy painted up, I need to get him on a base. And what kind of a base is right for the Raven Guard? The Raven Guard hail from my moon called Deliverance. Yes, it really is called Deliverance. I think most, pretty much nothing is known about it, but it is an airless moon with a lot of mining going on on it. I'm not really feeling it for my Raven Guard guy. I think I'm gonna put him in the jungle. I mixed up a nice ball of green stuff and then tore off a piece of cork to make a little overhang. I like when the environment breaks the confines of the base. And then I added the milliput around this, squishing it into position to fill out the base and give me a nice gluing position for some decorations later. I used another piece of cork to press some texture into the wet milliput and then covered it in wood glue and sprinkled on some coconut husk. Coconut husk is better for representing dirt than sand in my opinion. And in a few places I added more glue and larger chunks of coconut to make the ground look more uneven and natural. Now for those decorations, some epic decorations. I used alocasia plants from Epic Basing, putting a drop of super glue and then pressing them deep into the milliput. And then I added in some more grass tufts. All these different materials working together will add texture to make it feel more like a jungle. My little beaky boy is ready for some painting and I actually have a lot of experience with the Raven Guard because at the start of 10th edition, I was using their detachment a lot for my Space Marines. I kind of don't know why I switched. I guess because I'm a Black Templar player, so I should be using the Black Templar Doctrines, but the Raven Guard one is really, really good. Their detachment ability, Shadow Masters, is really good and really simple. If you're more than 12 inches away from the enemy, you're minus one to be hit. Really nice. It almost feels like that should be a baked in rule for Space Marines because everything in the game is so good at killing Space Marines. They really don't feel like the super soldiers they are on the tabletop. And once you get into the stratagems, things go bananas. This stratagem, Strike from the Shadows, gives you plus one to your ballistic skill and plus one AP to an infantry unit. And you might think, sure, it's an infantry unit. That doesn't sound that special. Centurion Devastators are an infantry unit. The walking tanks are coming. Laz cannons, hitting on twos, twin linked, strength 12, re-rolling, AP minus four, D6 plus one damage. Don't mind if I do. Is it worth 200 points in game? Nope but I'm gonna take them anyway, because I just love them. More realistically, Guerrilla Tactics is the super hot stratagem from the detachment. It lets you, at the end of your opponent's fight phase, yoink a unit of infantry off of the board and put them back into strategic reserve so that they can come right back on in your next movement phase. You get to do this with one infantry squad. You could do it with Centurions, but you probably shouldn't. It actually works much better on Phobos and Scouts because you can pick two units a turn to yank off the board. And one thing that could be kind of hot with this is using it on Eliminators, an often overlooked Space Marine unit because they're, they're kind of whatever, but take three last fusels, set them up with a nice juicy target, and then yank them both off the board so you can redeploy them with an even juicier target next turn, and you can keep doing that on and on and on. That's pretty spicy. Ah, now that I'm really hot on the Raven Guard, I am excited to paint this guy up. I prime my boy in black and I think I can get a ton of the model finished quickly just using some smart order of operations. I zenithalled white paint from above and this looks fantastic on his shoulder cape and base, which have a ton of nice gritty textures that separate those from the nice smoothness of his crisp armor. Then I put brown into my airbrush and sprayed this onto his base, letting it splash onto his legs. I was a little bit more careful spraying this onto the cape, but in no time he had been browned and it was finally time to touch a paintbrush. On his armor, I used a coat of Army Painter Grim Black, hitting the plastic parts of his bolter and leaving his helmet for last. And eventually I decided I really liked the white helmet. Veteran Raven Guard wear white helmets, so I guess this intercessor is a veteran. I used some brown speed paint on all his little pouches and then went back to the airbrush, filling it with saturated green ink and I sprayed this all over the base and on his cape. Pro tip, I poured the extra onto my palette, just in case I make any mistakes later and I need to go back to this color. Back to the brush, I painted all of his gun parts with one of my favorite colors, Contrast Rattling Grime. This stuff is the color of gun. And I put a little bit of skeleton horde over the skull of his little raven friend. 
And you know what else is a little friend? That's right, our Patreon. This month we have the Mining Colony Terrain and Vehicles, utilitarian machines that are more than they appear, designed to ride across the landscape, firing stolen weapons, or tunneling underneath to lay traps. And the mine and containers make for thematic and useful terrain. The colony is ready to uprise. And if you always want to be up to date on what's happening at Eonza Battle and be entered into our monthly giveaways, this month we're picking three followers to win this month's train. Follow the link in the description to sign up to our newsletter. The Raven Guard wear red trim on their shoulder armor, so I mixed up some dark red and put this over the edge and then painted in the tactical badge. The Intercessor Arrow. I collect Black Templar, so I don't really have cohesive heraldry, but there is definitely a charm to sticking strictly to the Codex Astartes. At this point, He's kind of done. Like, if I painted the eyes and did the base for him, I could put this on the tabletop and be satisfied. And this is where I love models to get to, and it helps if they get there quickly, because now I can just futz with the model and put it away whenever I want. A little bit of extra glitter over here, a couple of the rhinestones over here. I just get to sit here and perfect it. The speed paint did a great job, but it could use some edge highlights. I took a light blue and did a very light dry brushing all over the model. The blue will look white against the black, but not stand out as starkly as pure white would. And then I glazed this blue over the helmet to add in some shadows. Now for that red trim. I decided to add some highlights on the topmost part of the emblem, highlighting these up to pure vibrant red. And as I had that shoulder in front of me again, that big white arrow is a little much. I decided to turn it into a white outline. These are the sneaky boys. They probably do what they can to have their armor not stand out. On his pouches, I mixed up some brown and did some scraggly, stipply highlights and finished these off with a highlight of tan to give them that well-worn leather look. Then I took a silver paint and dry brushed this over his gun's many, many scopes. Rattling grime plus a dry brushing of silver equals instant perfect guns. And while I had the silver out, I decided to add some scratches to his armor, making it look like he's been out in the field for a while and has taken many bumps and scuffs, but his mission isn't yet complete. On his helmet, I used some black paint to add scratches as the silver won't show up very well on the white. And for his eyes, I picked these out with red. I'm looking around this guy trying to find something I want to touch up. And I think he's done. He finished up so quick. Oh, and it was so much fun. Oh, I'm a Black Templar player, but I could, I could really see having a good time with the Raven Guard. Nice, simple color scheme. I think his little shoulder cape turned out great. Painting the helmet a different color always works on Space Marines. Really, it always works on any model. Oh, I like him a lot. Oh, and I really like playing the Raven Guard Detachment. Oh. <laughs> the Raven Guard don't get a lot of love from Games Workshop, but that could change one day. Their Primarch, Corvus Corax, has been spotted in several of the Warhammer novels. He now appears as a very Celestine-esque Demon Prince-like character, and yes, of course, he is a giant raven. If he returns to the setting and fixes his Legion's gene seed, ah, oh, the Raven Guard could come back really, really strong. Oh, and I just want to paint more of them. Maybe a kill team. I already have three Space Marine kill teams because a lot of the Space Marines are really fun to paint, but I could maybe do a fourth. I have really been enjoying painting one Marine from all of the different colors of the Space Marines, and let me know in the comments below what color, I guess rather chapter, would you like to see next?